I'd like to praise Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders, a great millstone that's holding it down on the highways and the byways. And all salutations to the brothers of GMS. Let's kick off this lesson talking about the digital hand. It's Esau diabolical plan. You know, he's the master disaster. His diabolicalness, you know. His the uh dangerous devices. This is uh, Isaiah 36 and 6. Although trust in the stab of this broken reed on Egypt, therein if a man lean, it will go into his hand. So that's that digital uh, currency built inside your hand. You know what I'm saying? The diabolical plans of Esau. Talking to you on a metaphorical way. Precept upon precept. Check out the video clip. Shalom. This is a call for an uprising. Welcome to today's show. Take a deep breath with me because I want to take you on a little journey here. As I try to explain to some of you who don't understand, and some of you already do, but at least together for those of you who already do, we can talk about it. And for those of you who don't, I have been racking my brain for a while trying to figure out some ways I could explain this without saying things directly and without, you know, because I need this to be clear and simple. And somebody posted a video on my website, and that to me is just how God works. And that's why the website's so important, because people can share certain things that I don't see, or even if I already know about it, but then I see it and I'm like, wow, that's so much more simply put for me to explain it to people. So, while I was working on one video, I decided to connect the dots here to make it make sense. So join me, if you will, as I show you what they are doing. Now, you all are aware that they really want to put something inside your body, so much so that, you know, they are going to shut you out of the world. Now, I want you to hear this clip from the premier in Australia who talks about a new economy, okay? A new economy is the key thing to listen to when he says this. Not just the fact that they're shutting people out. Listen. To protect the health system, we've got everybody locked down. We're going to move to a situation where, to protect the health system, we're going to lock out people who are not vaccinated and can be. If you're making the choice not to get vaccinated, then you're making the wrong choice. You're making the wrong choice. And for safety's sake, and for the back to that point about how much work our nurses have to do, as this becomes absolutely a pandemic of the unvaccinated and we open everything up, it's not going to be safe for people who are not vaccinated to be roaming around the place spreading the virus. That's what they'll be. That's what they'll be doing. So there's every reason, every reason, uh, to get vaccinated. And there are appointments available, and there'll be even more appointments available throughout September, October, November. Let's get to those thresholds as fast as we possibly can. But yes, there's going to be a vaccinated uh, economy, and you get to participate that. You get to participate in that if you are vaccinated. But yes, there's going to be a vaccinated uh, economy, and you get to participate that. You get to participate in that if you are vaccinated. Okay, what he's talking about is a new economy. Remember the Great Reset, and a lot of these things that I've been talking about, and other channels you probably listen to have been talking about the Great Reset. We keep hearing it, the Great Reset. They play beautiful music behind them talking about this stuff, so people are just like, oh, this sounds okay. As long as things I have my phone, everything's okay, and yeah. Well, the Great Reset involves a new economy, right? And you heard him say shutting people out of the economy. And that's why all of us are talking about the mark coinciding with this. Because there is a chippy de doo okay? A chip. Potato chip, right? There's a potato chip inside a certain magic potion that will eventually be permanently inside of people to make sure they never catch the common cold that's floating around the world. And unless you have that, you will not be a part of this economy, which means you will not be able to buy or sell. It is probably the most known verse in scripture for most of us who have, they call fear mongers or always are talking about the Bible in this sense, instead of talking about the cup, you know, all the lovey dovey stuff, which is fine and dandy because Jesus Christ is loving, but not to these people who reject him when he comes back. So they better accept him. 
But Revelation chapter 13, verse 17. And the second beast required all people, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. So that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, the name of the beast and the number of its name. Here is a call for wisdom. Let the one who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and that number is 666. Now, some of you are aware of I dot 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 D dot 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 2020, okay? Which was well before the year 2020, but just so happens a lot of this stuff happened in the year 2020. And a lot of you are aware of certain patents that have that number specifically in it. Connected, of course, to Mr. Billy Willie Gates. People will not be able to buy or sell. The key is that you will not be able to buy or sell. In a new economy, you will not be able to do these things. You will not be able to buy or sell. You will be shut out. And all of these people who are all about togetherness and love and one, the elites know how stupid they are because those people, as long as they can go back to their daily routines, They don't care if we starve to death because they look at us as bad people. Not doing anything violent, just bad, horrible people because the TV tells them. And they aren't going to be there to hold our hand. They aren't going to come and say, do these people need food? I don't like what they're doing to them. You don't hear any of the jabberood saying that to the unjabberood. And it should be the other way around because we're the ones trying to save them. But they're too prideful and stupid to know. Because they're going to join this new economy, this new industrial economy revolution, or what they call the fourth industrial revolution, which they've been talking about for years. And I'm going to show you what it is. Now you can play connect the dots. And I also want you to look who's in the crowd. People, I've covered this before. I covered when the Capio spoke at these things, the UN, the World Economic Forum, Joe Biden's in attendance. Oh boy, Joe Biden, DiCaprio, what do they have in common? Oh, well, we need the social engineers there so that they can, I mean, the guy acts in movies and he's at these things where they're talking about a new industrial revolution because the engineers are the ones who are going to get the masses on board. Biden, well, this is before he's president. There. This is all precursor. This is all, this is all prepping them. All of these celebs and everybody who's a social influencer has known about this for a long time. They've hinted at it at award shows. Oh, this is the end of this. This is the end of that. Because they know that this was coming now. And it's here now, and they're doing their due diligence, what they're told, like good little foot soldiers, because that's what they are. And they're prepping people to go and get this because this is leading to this. The original Industrial Revolution was driven by the discovery that you could use steam engines to do all kinds of interesting things. That was followed by additional revolutions for electricity and computers and communications technology. We're now in the early stages of the fourth industrial revolution, which is bringing together digital, physical, and biological systems. One of the features of this fourth industrial revolution is that it doesn't change what we are doing, but it changes us. We need a different economic model that will allow us to meet the basic needs of every human on the planet and that will be focused not on growth per se, but on maximizing human well-being. We have energy technologies that can power our civilization, but how do we get it and implement it at the scale we need at a price that people around the world can afford? If we're able to do something to transform cities, to make them more efficient, then the impact can be huge. We can use asset tracking, we can use IT, we can use 3D printing to decouple growth from the resource constraints we have. The question of adding quality to quantity, it's really about a diverse, safe, healthy and just world with clean air, clean water, clean energy. Together we are fighting to preserve our fragile climate from irreversible damage and devastation of unthinkable proportions. The prediction of 5 million jobs lost by 2020 to technology is serious, but the main question is how will we define work? How will we share the wealth? How can you have a doctor that really knows a lot about data? How can you have a biologist that knows about medicine? 
We have to create a space that enables people to think freely, to think divergent thoughts, to think creative thoughts. We really need a new education or new training. We're working with a world in motion in FIRST Robotics, trying to encourage students from third grade all the way up through the end of high school to pursue science, math, and different technologies. It's this ability of digital technology to change outcomes, to truly empower people that can create a more equitable growth fourth industrial revolution has the potential to make inequalities visible and to make them less acceptable in the future. I was the first person in the world to be able to voluntarily move my legs while stepping in a robot. The cure will be possible if enough of the right people have the will to make it happen. We're seeing this incredibly exciting convergence of genome editing, DNA sequencing. Governments have a very important role to play in enabling the safe and effective use of technologies. We need to take responsibility at every level of society to adapt to these technological challenges which are redefining what it means to be completely embedded in this world. Even though we have everyday problems we have to solve, we have to find a way to lay the foundations for the innovations of tomorrow. The fourth industrial age, the Great Reset, a new economy, a digital economy connected to the internet. Well, how could you physically connect to the internet? And what are you going to go do? Put your finger in the wall socket? I don't think so. I don't think that's a good idea. Don't try that at home. How could you connect to the internet? Well, you couldn't put, you could wear something that they've been using as a way to desensitize you to get ready for this stuff. Like, you know, these watches and bracelets that tell you your calorie count or tell you how many steps you've burned. What do you think those are there for? The Apple watch, 